If you've ever read the back of a food label, you've probably seen the letters MSG, short for monosodium glutamate, and chances are, heard warnings to stay away from it. Many people believe MSG causes headaches, allergies, or even what's often called Chinese restaurant syndrome. Some avoid it entirely, convinced it's an artificial chemical or universally bad. But is that really true? What does science actually say about MSG, and why are opinions so divided? One quick fact to begin with is that MSG is simply the sodium salt of glutamic acid, a naturally occurring amino acid found in tomatoes, cheeses, and even your own body. Its story is far stranger and more surprising than most people imagine. So, what exactly is MSG? Let's discover this in today's episode of Simple Things, Surprising Histories. MSG stands for monosodium glutamate. It's made from two components, sodium, the familiar element in table salt, and glutamate, one of the most common amino acids in nature. Glutamate is what gives foods like ripe tomatoes, aged cheeses, and soy sauce their umami, the savory fifth taste alongside sweet, salty, sour, and bitter. That's why when you taste MSG, you're actually tasting something quite natural, because chemically, the glutamate in MSG and the glutamate in a tomato are identical. But where did this substance actually come from? To trace that, we go back to early 20th century Japan. In 1908, Professor Kikune Ikeda, curious about the flavor of kelp-based dashi broth, identified glutamate as the source of its deep, savory taste. He crystallized this flavor and, together with businessman Saburosuke Suzuki, began selling it as ajinomoto, meaning essence of taste. From there, MSG spread rapidly across Asia, Europe, and eventually the United States. By the 1930s and 1940s, it had become common in processed foods, canned soups, and even military rations, valued for enhancing flavor and making cheaper ingredients more appealing. But why did MSG become so important? Its importance lies in umami. Umami doesn't just make food taste better, it can also help improve appetite in the elderly, reduce the amount of sodium needed in recipes, and make low meat or vegetarian dishes feel richer and more satisfying. This made MSG incredibly valuable to the food industry, which uses it to enhance flavor economically, requiring less salt or fat to achieve the same savory impact. For decades, major food companies relied on MSG in countless snacks, soups, and seasonings, turning it into a kind of secret weapon for chefs and manufacturers. But if MSG was so useful and so widely embraced, then how did it suddenly become such a dangerous villain in the public imagination? The turning point came in 1969, when a single letter to a medical journal described something called Chinese restaurant syndrome, claiming symptoms like headaches and numbness after eating Chinese food. That one letter sparked a media storm. Overnight, MSG was framed as a mysterious and unhealthy chemical additive. The Western public grew suspicious, even as it remained widely used and trusted in Asia. No solid research supported the panic, but the narrative stuck anyway. No MSG labels spread across restaurant menus and food packaging, often mixed with cultural misconceptions, fear, or even subtle xenophobia. So what does modern science actually say about all of this? In recent decades, scientists revisited the entire controversy with controlled, well-designed studies. Many experiments tried to test whether people truly had MSG sensitivity. The result was clear. For the vast majority of people, MSG is safe, and there is no meaningful difference between glutamate that occurs naturally in food and the glutamate added through MSG.
Major health organizations, the FDA, the World Health Organization, and the European Food Safety Authority have all reached the same conclusion. MSG is one of the safest flavor enhancers used today. A very small number of people might experience mild, temporary symptoms if they consume extremely large amounts on an empty stomach, but under normal conditions, no evidence shows harm. In fact, our bodies naturally process far more glutamate from everyday foods than from the optional sprinkle of MSG added to a dish. But knowing that MSG is safe raises another question. How is it actually made today? Early MSG was extracted from seaweed, but that method wasn't sustainable as global demand grew. Modern MSG is made through fermentation, a process similar to brewing beer or making yogurt. Ingredients like sugar beets, sugar cane, or molasses are combined with specific bacteria that convert carbohydrates into glutamic acid. That glutamic acid is then neutralized with sodium, crystallized and refined into the familiar white MSG powder. It's essentially nature's own process, sped up and purified in a controlled, food-safe environment. And with all of this in mind, what's the real balance? What are the true pros and cons of MSG? On the positive side, MSG enhances flavor while allowing for reduced salt use, which can be beneficial for heart health. It helps lower calorie, plant-based, or elderly-friendly foods taste more appealing. And globally, it's recognized as safe by major health authorities. On the other hand, misconceptions still heavily influence public opinion and labeling practices, often due to outdated research or cultural bias. Overuse of MSG in highly processed foods can make unhealthy snacks more tempting. And while rare, mild sensitivities do exist, although similar sensitivities exist for many other common foods too. Overall, scientific consensus is clear. MSG is not a dietary villain, but like anything, it works best when used with awareness and balance. And as we look at the bigger picture, it becomes clear that MSG was never truly the enemy it was made out to be. It's a natural flavor enhancer, discovered through curiosity, embraced by cuisines around the world, and ultimately vindicated by decades of research. Its history shows how quickly public perception can be shaped by fear, media narratives, and cultural bias, sometimes overshadowing actual scientific evidence. Today, MSG's story continues as our understanding of flavor, nutrition, and food science evolves. What simple things history should we investigate next? Share your ideas in the comments. We might feature yours. If this episode taught you something new, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Until next time, keep questioning the everyday.